Hi everyone, I'm Gloria, and today I'm going to present on an exciting study that found that mindfulness meditation leads to pain relief, and that we can see these effects in the brain. Chronic pain is the leading cause of disability in America, and as someone who has also experienced severe chronic pain and realized how there is a lack of viable treatment options for chronic pain, this was a very interesting study for me. So the study I'm presenting on is called Mindfulness Meditation-Based Pain Relief Employs Different Neural Mechanisms Than Placebo and Sham Mindfulness Meditation. So you're probably wondering, what is sham mindfulness meditation? And sham mindfulness meditation in this treatment was to induce the participants into thinking that they're participating in a mindfulness intervention without giving them any sort of explicit instructions on how to meditate. So there was no information on being aware of the sensory changes or, um, or having sort of a non-judgmental attitude towards the changes. So yeah, this study was presented in the Journal of Neuroscience in 2015, and it's one of a handful of studies that look at a brief mindfulness intervention, its effects on pain relief, and the brain mechanisms that are involved in it. So before we proceed, I'm just going to give you a background on what we know about the brain and pain. So the S1 and S2 are part of the somatosensory cortex, and it's responsible for answering the question, where is pain located? The dorsolateral prefrontal cortex is responsible for the anticipation of pain, and the anterior cingulate cortex, the insula, the putamen, and the orbitofrontal cortex is what's called sort of the higher order brain regions that respond to pain. So they're responsible for integrating cognitive, emotional, and sensory aspects of pain and creating an adequate response to it. The thalamus and PAG are the lower level sensory uh, regions and they are simply responsible for relaying the pain responses that you feel in your body to the higher order brain regions. So the hypothesis of this study <coughs> is that mindfulness meditation will reduce pain, uh, pain intensity and unpleasantness more significantly and employ distinct neural mechanisms from placebo and sham mindfulness meditation. So for this study, there were 75 participants who were all pain-free, healthy volunteers, and they had no prior meditation experience. The pain stimuli that we had was noxious heat stimuli that was administered to the left calf by this device called the thermo. So the 75 participants were divided into four treatment arms randomly, and the first setting was the mindfulness meditation arm, in which they were instructed to pay attention to their breath, focus on the changing sensations, and employ a non-evaluative and non-judgmental attitude towards the changing sensations. The second arm was the placebo arm, in which they were told that they were participating in an experimental trial for an analgesic cream called lidocaine that was shown to effectively reduce pain. However, in reality, it was just a cream with no effect. Um, the third setting was the sham mindfulness setting, and in this setting, participants were simply told to close their eyes, take a few deep breaths, while we sit here in meditation. <laughs> and that was the only instruction they got. The control was an audio recording of this fascinating book, The Natural History and Antiquities of Selborne, <laughs> which was a validated neutral stimuli for obvious reasons. Um, so, what happened actually in the study was that before the four-day training, everyone underwent a baseline evaluation. So they underwent MRI testing and an evaluation of pain levels to make sure that everyone was at the same level starting. And then they went through a four-day training in which they um, had 20 minutes of whichever intervention over a course of four days. So they were trained on meditation or applied um, the placebo cream and evaluated on the pain. And to make sure that they were, they were um, focused on these interventions, they were assessed for effectiveness afterwards. Then a few days later, they were all brought into the MRI room and they went through four scans at rest. So this was just lying down, no sort of intervention. And they underwent two heat stimuli at 120 degrees Fahrenheit and two neutral stimuli at 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And after each scan, so four scans in total, they evaluated their pain levels. Afterwards, they were told to either meditate or someone came in and applied uh, the cream on their calf. And then they underwent four more brain scans under the same um, heat and neutral stimuli, and then again, pain levels were taken. So the results. 
So the study found that all manipulations decreased uh, pain levels, but that mindfulness meditation was the most effective. So in this graph, we see pain intensity, and we see that in the control, after heat administration, pain levels rose. And then in placebo and sham, uh, pain, there was pain reduction of about 10%. Whereas in mindfulness meditation, there was a 30% reduction with a very low um, heat level. And then um, for pain and pleasantness as well, in control um, levels go up. Placebo and sham experienced around 10 to 20% reductions, whereas mindfulness meditation experienced 50% reductions in pain and pleasantness. So what's going on in the brain while all this is happening? So the brain on meditation they found um, showed deactivation in these lower level sensory regions, including the thalamus and the PAG, and showed higher activation in the areas that are involved in the cognitive appraisal of pain. And they found that in the S1, um, the focus was redirected from the localized area of pain in the left calf to the nose and mouth, showing that people were actually focused more on the breathing than the pain that they were experiencing. So what this study concluded is that mindfulness meditation is an active process of recreating your subjective experience of pain by engaging higher order brain areas. The brain on placebo, on the other hand, showed that there was less activation in the S2 in the localized area of pain, showing that the pain response was sort of dampened in this group. And there was activation in the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, um, so the effects of pain attenuation was modified by their expectation of pain. They expected less pain, so they felt less. So they concluded that placebo is a much more passive process of pain attenuation. They also found that in sham mindfulness, the brain activation levels did not really correlate to the reductions in pain, and that it was actually correlated to reductions in respiration. So this showed that mindfulness meditation is a cognitively different process than sham mindfulness and very different from simply a relaxation response. So obvious limitations of the study is that it's a small sample size and because it featured pain-free volunteers, we can't necessarily generalize these results to the chronic pain population and that it wasn't a double-blind study. However, there is great significance in this study in that a relatively brief mindfulness intervention significantly reduced pain, and one of the biggest barriers to chronic pain patients undergoing meditation treatment is the time constraints that it's involved in, um, and also that it identified distinct neural pathways that contribute to this reduction. Also, it was compared against placebo, which is seen as the golden standard for um, effectiveness, and it showed that mindfulness meditation is different from relaxation.